Good evening, I'm Pastor Debbie Hasdorf, and I'm here to welcome you tonight to our Ash Wednesday service. Ash Wednesday is a very important liturgical holiday for people who are Christians. We gather on this night to remember that we came from dust and to dust we will return, that life is brief and fleeting, and so we must make the best of the life that we have. So tonight we're going to have a series of readings, and then at the end we're going to share ashes. Welcome. The Call to Discipleship. After John's arrest, Jesus came unto Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, saying, The time has come at last. God's reign has arrived. You must change your hearts and minds and believe the good news. We must change our hearts and minds. he was walking by the lake of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon Peter and Andrew, casting their large net into the water. They were fishermen, so Jesus said to them, follow me and I will teach you to be fishers of humanity. At once they left their nets and followed. Jesus calls and we follow, at least we try to follow. Trouble is, he's always out ahead of us, moving faster than we do. Lent is a time for deciding to follow Jesus, a time for returning to his path. Tonight, we can lay down some of the heavy load we carry. Tonight, we can fall again under the spell of Jesus' love. The Burden of Idolatry When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they confronted Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods to go ahead of us. Aaron answered them, Take your gold and bring it to me. He took it out of their hands, cast the metal in a mold, and made it into the image of a bull calf. From time before time, this has been our way. We sense the living spirit but can hardly let it work its way before we try to capture and control it in flesh and entomb it. We want things predictable and safe, but we can never be too safe. Jesus knew this. We must be born from water and spirit. Flesh can give birth only to flesh. It is spirit that gives birth to spirit. The wind blows where it wills. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So with everyone who is born from spirit. And from the Sermon on the Mount, I bid you put away anxious thoughts about food and drink to keep you alive and clothes to cover your body. Surely life is more than food the body more than clothes. Set your mind on God's reign and God's justice before everything else, and all the rest will come to you as well. We are idol makers, all of us. We think, first I must have a fine, secure home, and then I will seek out God's ways. First, I must advance in my job. First, I must find a partner. First, I must be healthy. First, I must get an education. First, I must raise my children. First, first, first. 
But maybe we have it backward. Maybe there is no home, job, marriage, health, education, or parenthood without God. Set your mind on God's reign and God's justice before everything else. What are the idols that you and I put before commitment to God? What are the things that we want to happen before we follow Jesus? We earn, O Christ, for wholeness and for your healing touch. Too long have we felt helpless, our burdens seem too much, forgetting all pretense. The Burden of Violence You have learned that they were told, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But what I tell you is this. Do not set yourself against anyone who wrongs you. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn your left. If someone wants to sue you for your shirt, give them your coat as well. If someone in authority makes you go one mile, go two. Give when you are asked to give, and do not turn your back on one who would borrow. You have learned that they were told, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But what I tell you is this, love your enemies and pray for your persecutors. There must be no limit to your goodness, as God's goodness knows no bounds. Another burden we carry is violence. We are acutely aware of differences. We remember wrongs done to us for long ago. We believe that weapons will keep us safe from potential enemies. Jesus knew the violence of our hearts. He knew our liking for grudges, the temptation of bitterness. Jesus counseled a different way. Peter came up and asked how often we should forgive. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. Jesus also knew that violence begets violence, that we must resist the temptation to outdo our enemies, that fighting will not lead to peace. Judas, one of the 12, appeared with a great crowd armed with swords and staves. They came up, seized hold of Jesus and held him. Suddenly, one of Jesus' disciples drew his sword and slashed at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. At this, Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its pop proper place. All those who take the sword die by the sword. Fear and anger are natural human responses. But they lead so easily to hatred and violence. It is not the fear and anger that are wrong. But the way we choose to respond to them. What are the ways we allow fear and anger to encumber us with hatred and violence? Either the hatred we carry within or the violence we choose to act out on the outside. And now at length discerning the The Burden of Selfishness. It was at this time that the disciples came to Jesus with the question, 
Who is greatest in God's realm? Jesus called a little child to his side. Believe me, he said, unless you change your whole outlook and become like little children, you will never know God. Whoever can be as humble as this little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Like the disciples, we too are interested in greatness, wealth, fame, power. At some level, we're all attracted to these. Like James and John, we wouldn't mind being chosen to sit at the left and right hands of God. Jesus, too, was concerned with power, but it was the power to love rather than control, the power to give rather than receive, the power to serve rather than be served. It was before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that his hour had come, and he must leave this world and go to God. He had always loved his own who were in the world, and now he was to show the full extent of his love. During the supper, Jesus, well aware that God had entrusted everything to him and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the table, laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, tied it round him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash their feet and to wipe them with a towel. Jesus had everything, power, responsibility, authority, strength. But he used it to serve, to wash his disciples' feet, to die on a cross. We also have been given power, responsibility, authority, and strength. But how are we using them? Let us ask ourselves how we are weighed down by not using our power with love and our responsibility with wisdom. Forgiveness and new life. We have examined the burdens of idolatry, violence, and misuse of power as they weigh down our lives and keep us from following Jesus. These are a heavy load indeed, yet the good news of our faith is that Jesus seeks out people like us. Said Jesus, it is not the healthy who need the doctor, but those who are ill. I have not come to invite the righteous, but the sinners, to change their ways. Come and celebrate with me, for I have found that sheep of mine which was lost. I tell you that in heaven there is more joy over one sinner whose heart is changed than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Salvation has come to this house today, for it was the lost that the Son of Man came to seek and to save. Come, you who have won my God's blessings, take your inheritance, the realm reserved for you since the foundation of the world. For I assure you that whatever you did for the very humblest ones, you did for me. In light of the promises of Jesus, let us renounce the burdens of idolatry, violence, and selfishness that weigh us down. Let us allow the cleansing fire of the Holy Spirit to purify our hearts. And let us pray for the love of Jesus to dawn on our hearts and draw us closer to the life he offers. The Ashes of Forgiveness. Ashes are a symbol of purification. 
As a fire burns, it can separate what is valuable from what is valueless. Just as an assayer's fire can separate a base metal from one that is precious. In this same way, the ashes are pure. They are a symbol of the new space that is present within us for a new life. Let us claim the new life Jesus offers us. Will you pray with me? God of love and mercy, we come to you in prayer, seeking to change our hearts and minds. We confess the baggage of idols, bitterness, and self-concern that we so often drag along with us, struggling under its weight all the while we attempt to follow Christ. Cleanse us from our attachment to these old things. Burn away their power in us and purify our hearts. In place of old ways, fill us with the new fire of your Holy Spirit. Open up new opportunities for us to follow Jesus in loving you and our neighbors. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Friends, receive the good news of our faith. For in the name of Jesus, I announce that our sins are forgiven. The old has died. Behold, the new has come. And now we are going to share in the ashes as a symbol of the beginning of Lent. Those who wish come forward now and receive the mark of these ashes as a sign of your forgiveness and new life. The end of this service symbolizes the beginning of our journey into Lent. This year, after we've come through a year with so much darkness and so many hard times, I believe that we can look at Lent maybe in a new way this year. We can think about Lent as a time of opening up towards Easter, opening up our hearts, our minds, even our doors, so that we can experience the love of God at Easter time. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that you be with us as we take this Lenten journey. Help us to see our lives as unfolding before us. Remind us that even though we started from dust and will end in dust, our days have meaning and purpose, and we can be your love to the people around us. Help us to center in on your presence in our lives. Help us to listen for your still small voice and guide us as we walk with Jesus through the steps to Jerusalem, to the cross, and then to a resurrection. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and grant you God's peace. Amen. <laughs>